Anyway, the next match was the match. It was the only match on the program and one of the better wrestling matches of the week from anybody. Dax Harwood against good old Will Ostrich. And actually, Osprey. yes. And I was going to do that until I saw the finish. And I said, F it, I'm not, I don't care. I was going to say good shit about him. They had a great wrestling match. Osprey, I've, here's the things I wrote about Osprey, because this is the first time that I've ever seen him in a singles match. Remember, we said the six man from last week or whatever, I'm trying to see, okay, is this guy as good as they say he is? He didn't really do anything. So here with Dax, yes, you'd have to be a paraplegic not to be able to have a good match with Dax Harwood, but I'd be able to see something. And I wrote down, he looks good. He's got good attitude. He seemed to be serious about his wrestling. He's athletic. He's got a heel demeanor and facial expressions. And they did nice stuff. Um... He takes the big backdrop. I, I'm a fan of anybody taking a backdrop these days. You never see it. They did a nice heat spot, went to the break with uh, Osprey drop kick Dax, and he took a bump into the steps. Of course, Osprey still got penalized somewhat here like all the other heels we were talking about on the show a few days ago. Every time the heel on TV for any company now, stops the baby face. They go to a break, and you don't see any of the heat. They come back from the break, and the baby face starting his comeback. What a rib. But anyway, uh, Dax made the comeback. A bunch of multiple Germans missed a diving headbutt. Osprey hit a big splash, got a two count. And they started going back and forth with big stuff and nice false finishes, different kind of sh People were going batshit. And I wrote, this is great stuff. And I wrote two things. I wrote Dax Harwood is the best wrestler in AEW and Will Osprey blows Twinkle Toes Olivier away. And if say, everybody was crowing about somebody being a great wrestler in Japan or whatever, it should have been this Osprey fellow instead of Twinkle Toes. But then Osprey hit some kind of running elbow thingy to the back of Dax's head and beat him one, two, three. They did multiple things in this match that looked so much better for a finish. But okay, again, the problem now is Dax is one of the best, if not the best wrestler on the AEW roster which means he's now being penalized by losing every single match they put him in. And somebody's going to say, well, the tag team guys are supposed to lose to the top singles guys. Yeah, dipshits. If the tag team guy has any credibility at all, which has not been instilled in both FTRs, Cash or Dax, to the level it should have been, and we have not seen, have we seen Dax Harwood win one single single match not that i'm aware and we've seen him i guess anybody no i don't think so so that's the little detail that people forget yes when bobby eaton wrestled rick flair then flair would go over because bobby's the best tag team flair's the world champion single guy but they ignore that bobby as a team and individually had a name and a reputation and multiple wins over multiple type of people they're penalizing Dax because he's the best worker so he can have a good match with everybody. So anybody they want to get over, they put him in the ring with Dax. Which this wouldn't be bad since they were saying that Osprey is a top guy in New Japan and just a world beater as a single. Okay, so a top guy came in and beat a guy that we are trained to think is one of the top guys. He's a tag team champion, not the real champions, the AEW champions, but champion of a another company that the owner bought. They've at least been featured in main events, so Osprey must be a main event guy because he was brought in against another top guy and he beat him in a good match. So that means to my innocent, untrained eyes as a fan who's never seen or heard of Will Osprey before, now I've seen him and I know how to take him. He's a main event guy and he's pretty good. Until the match is over. And then suddenly Osprey wins. There's no reason to continue kicking the shit out of Dax. 
But suddenly, Jeff Cobb, Fletcher and Davis, what are their other names? <laughs> I can't remember. The new guys that jumped in last the week. The great O'Conn. <laughs> well, no, I thought these two guys were were uh, um, Aussie Oldham, but they're a team called Aussie Open, but their names are Fletcher and Davis. And then another guy named Great O'Conn. Jump in and start kicking the shit out of Dax. So then here comes Cash and Rocky Romero. They jump in and they start fighting for whatever reason. And you can't tell anybody apart because we've never seen half these people before and all of them are in street clothes. And then suddenly, music plays and it's pockets. Brian, your prognostication was correct. They had to interject him in this ostrich business just to make sure that I would have, in the end, nothing good to say about Will Ostrich. So now the music plays, and here comes this fucking denim-clad slug walking, ambling down the entranceway, and everybody, and there's 10 grown men in the ring, and they all stop fighting and start staring at the guy. Why? What does he ever do to anybody? When he comes and gets in the ring, he doesn't do anything to you. Why would you stop? There's five of them and this guy. And then by the time Pockets gets to the ring, everybody having this 10-man riot have disappeared except for Ostrich, who's still standing in the ring with a dumbfounded look on his face. And he stands there and lets Pockets walk in the ring and walk a circle around him and stand there and stare at him. And nobody's doing anything. And then the baby faces come back in, Dax and Cash and Romero, and there was another one. And they stand behind Pockets, and Osprey jumps out on the floor with all the heels that are just standing on the floor staring at the other guys. They all went from having a riot to standing there waiting on a fucking bus. And nobody said a goddamn word. And then, if, have I seen this correctly? A match on the pay-per-view coming up in what weekend after next is Will Osprey, this big new Japan star, supposedly... According to what Uncle Dave used to say, the greatest wrestler in the world till Dave fell in love with Twinkle Toes. And they've just given him a big debut in a single match over one of AEW's top guys. And now he's going to fight a preliminary comedy mascot on the show that people have to pay for. So now we have the idea that Will Ostrich is just some middle card guy that does the joke matches and that's where he's going. So why am I now interested? What happened here, Brian? As I said at the top, the issue with Dynamite this week was in many cases it was Tony Khan's worst impulses on display. Dax had a great match with Will Ospreay. I like Will Ospreay. And the post-match immediately changed the tone. Everyone hits the ring. People still don't know who the fuck Rocky Romero is. We're supposed to just accept now that he's there. That's the thing with AEW. So you see someone, and then they just start running in with other guys, and you're supposed to just accept, oh, I guess they're now friends with those people. So I don't think people really cared about that. There are certainly people there who like New Japan and are ready to pop for the New Japan guys, because when someone like Will Ospreay comes out, if he's getting a reaction, that's who is giving him a reaction. But even those fans, after a while, you're just watching people who have never been on this show do angles, participate in brawls, and we know we're not going to see most of them again after, like, whatever, the pay-per-view. In three weeks, they're all going to be gone. So it's just this weird period for the show. But he, 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 and, then, every... and then Orange Cassidy, look, I told you Orange Cassidy was going nowhere. He had no fear of going anywhere because Tony Khan loves him. And this is the problem. Will Ospreay gets a win over Dax. Yeah, Dax should have more wins. It should mean more. But Ospreay still gets a win on TV in a great match against one of the tag team champions. And then you're going to put him in a match 
with Orange Cassidy at the pay-per-view. To the AEW hardcore fan, that's the greatest thing ever. They get to see Orange Cassidy. He does this thing where he pretends to kick the guy, and then he does another thing where all of a sudden in the middle of the match, he turns into a wrestler. They can't wait for that. But to the average person, it's going to make Will Ospreay look like a dipshit having a competitive match with this fucking gimmick. And that's what I'm saying. You bring this guy in, and people are thinking he's supposedly the greatest wrestler in the world, and then you put him in a comedy match with some dipshit where he's going to look like a jack-off, and, and you've wasted that. Then anybody that didn't already know who Will Ospreay was, which is the majority of people, is going to say, well, he's another fucking goof. <laughs> yeah. Just because the owner wants to dress up like this guy on Halloween. We got, okay. So hey. anyway, uh, the point is they've now told us no plans for Ostrich. He's on the card. Nothing to get excited about. Who gives a shit? So that's the way I'm going to treat him from now on. <laughs> if, if guys, he comes in the company and the first person he gets is fucking pockets. Fuck. That's what killed Cole. And I liked Cole beforehand. I had no opinion about Ostrich, so it could have gone either way. He got over with me, and then his boss finished him off. What were you going to say? What was I going to say? I don't know. <laughs>